So tonight is Monday, Thursday. And it's this interesting time. We've just ended Lent, and we're not yet in Easter. We're entering into these three days that are kind of in between, where we're going to talk about the Last Supper and the washing of feet, and then tomorrow the arrest and the, and the betrayal and, 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 the, and the beating and the crucifixion. And then it's Saturday where we're all kind of waiting in this liminal space, listening to the stories, those ancient stories from the Old Testament and the New. This time has been set apart to be the Christian Passover. In the fourth century, the church elders decided to create a time of the Christian Passover. Uh, the Jewish people had their Passover, but they also knew that this was something that we needed to do as well. The Passover is to remember what God had done, and the Christian Passover is a time for us to remember that last week of Jesus' life. And so it's fitting for us tonight that we have the reading from Exodus, which is the first Passover. It's the time where the 10th plague was about to happen, and Moses is received from the Lord, and the Lord is speaking to the people and giving them instructions on what they need to do, and they have to sacrifice a lamb. Now, that was a big sacrifice, especially because it was something that could feed, it could be uh, uh, used for all kinds of things, and this is a sacrifice to the family. He tells them to eat it with unleavened bread, eat it hurriedly, because the Lord is coming. And you're to take the blood of this lamb and paint the doorpost. For the Lord will come and pass over the house, and everyone in the house will be saved. And so this happens, and afterwards, God says, this is a day for you to remember me. You're going to have a festival, and you're going to have these ordinances every single year. You will remember me. This is the first Passover. And so as they go off into the desert, into the wilderness for those 40 years, they remember this story. And they tell this story and they sit around with unleavened bread and they break it as they remember the manna from heaven, as they remember the unleavened bread that didn't have time to rise as they were escaping. And they share it with each other and they remember the story of God's salvation. And they share the wine, remembering the blood that was spread on the doorpost that God passed over them. And they tell their ancient story to each other. And then the story takes a shift when Jesus comes in to play. For Jesus and his friends are sitting at their own Passover meal, remembering this story. And he's taking bread and breaking it. And he gives it to his disciples. But he says something new. This bread is my body, broken for you. As you eat this, remember me. And now the story is changing. Not only are they remembering their past story, but Jesus is inviting them into what's to come. And he takes that cup. He says, there's a new covenant in this cup. This is my blood poured out for you. As you drink of it, remember me. Matthew, Mark, and Luke all have this story of Jesus sitting with the disciples at their last supper. Paul reminds us of that today as he recalls the words of Jesus, and he ends it by saying, as you eat this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We will continue to proclaim it, to remember it, to have it etched on our heart. As we receive the elements, it becomes a part of us, and we go out into the world to proclaim it. It's a powerful story. It's a powerful message. It is a remembrance all the way back to Moses. Tonight, we gather around the table and we kneel down to receive the bread that's broken and the wine that is poured. And we get to remember this story again. But there's more to it because those early church elders created this as a time for us to remember the entirety of the story. And it starts with tonight, Maundy Thursday. And the word Maundy comes from the Greek word that means command. And we have in our gospel lesson today a commandment to love one another. Jesus says, love one another as I have loved you. But what kind of love is Jesus showing to those disciples? Well, he's at this meal. See, John doesn't have a Last Supper per se, but he's at a Passover meal with his disciples. 
And Jesus gets up and takes off the outer robe and puts on a towel and he starts to wash the disciples' feet. And they're a little bit stunned and taken aback by what Jesus is doing. And then afterwards he says, do you know what I just did? The student's, the student's greater than the teacher. The teacher's not greater than the student. The master's not greater than the slave. I'm giving you an example to follow. Serve one another. Wash each other's feet. I'm giving you a new commandment to love one another as I have loved you. It's a really beautiful message, and I think it would make a great Easter card from Grandma. Love one another, right? Not you, Grandma. <laughs> However, this message is a lot deeper than that. Because Jesus is taking this basin, and he's taking the role of a slave, a servant in the house. It's not something he should be doing. When you went into somebody's home, they would have somebody come to wash your feet, to prepare you for the meal, to prepare you for whatever's happening in that home. And Jesus is doing that for the least of these. And he takes this basin and he goes over to James and John, who have been bickering all day long about who's going to be on the right, who's going to be on the left. Will you pick me first? Will you pick me first when we get up to heaven? And Jesus quiets them and he washes their feet and he serves them with this love. And then he goes over to Thomas, who's been questioning and doubting. And we know what he's going to do later on. He's going to doubt the, the presence of the resurrected Christ. I need to really see those hands. And Jesus quiets him. And he washes his feet. And he serves him with love. He goes to Peter, who's been just flip-flopping all over the place. And now he's going to deny Christ three times before the rooster crows. And he quiets him down. And he washes his feet. And he serves them with love. And Jesus goes to Judas, who's going to betray him that night and set a chain of events in motion that leads to his crucifixion. And he quiets him and he washes his feet and he serves him with love. A new commandment. Love one another. I don't know about you, but I needed to hear that today because there are people in my life that are selfish, that just want to be number one, that want to step on people to get to whatever it is that's next. And sometimes that's me. Can we wash their feet? Can we serve them with love? There are people that are out there that are doubting and questioning everything that we do, everything that we say, how we act in public, our kids, the clothing, all kinds of doubt. And sometimes that's us. Can we wash their feet? Can we serve them with the love of Christ? There are people that deny. They deny rights. They deny food. They deny place. They deny pr privilege access, and sometimes that's us. Can we wash their feet? Can we serve them with love? And there are definitely people in our lives that have betrayed us, harmed us, done things that we'll never forgive, stabbed in the back. And we've done that too. Can we wash their feet? Can we serve them with love? We've been given a beautiful new commandment tonight. Love one another. And that's worth remembering. Amen.